Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I'm your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. Not in a good mood. Sad. Bad day this Monday, you know. Everybody in the store is avoiding me. It's like I'm throwing a no-hitter. Nobody wants to sit next to me, you know what I mean? Jets lost. And you know what? I'm pissed. I hate the Pats. No, I, I, I shouldn't say that. I despise the Pats. You know, I'm not a big fan of them at all. Bill Belichick, I think, is classless at times, so I hope you're watching BB. Um, you know, we lost. I was there. I had a lot of fun. Tailgated. Had some great wines. Had a great, unbelievable 1990 Poggio Antico Brunello Reserva. So if you've ever had a chance to try that wine, I mean, it's a long off the shelves, but it was fantastic. So I'm sad. I don't want to talk about it, and we'll just move on. Eight episodes to go after today to episode 100. That's right, 100 episodes. I can't believe I've already done 100 episodes almost. It seems just like yesterday we met in the park and enjoyed a bottle of wine. I'm really excited. We're going to do a very special episode. We've been yapping about it behind the scenes here at WL for a while now, but I'm sure many of you have ideas, so don't hold back. If you've got any, let me know about it. Finally, before I start into the, today's episode, I want to talk about one other thing. There's a lot of lurkers. Some of you came out recently. I've been trying to pull you in, but please, come on board. A lot of you. I look at the stats. We've got unbelievable traffic, but still somewhat around the same amount of people posting. The people here are really nice. Everybody's enjoying themselves. It's really great to see different opinions, and I really would love to see more of you post. I get a lot of you that email me directly, which is great, but enjoy. Get in there. Ask questions. It's a great growing community. I'm proud of it. I want to see more people interact. I want to see more opinions, so please don't be scared. We're not going to bite. Finally, before I start, <laughs> I said that just before, Chianti. We did a Chianti episode and I read all the comments and I want to talk about one thing and this is the core, the heart of WLTV. We do not make judgments about vintages, about properties, about wineries, about regions, about grapes as a whole. We don't generalize here. We had four bottles of Chianti Classico last episode. Four. One which I liked, you know, and you know, the others were great, what have you, but that does not mean in any shape or form that I don't like Chianti or Chianti Classico or Chianti Reserve or whatever you want to say. I mean, as a matter of fact, people have pointed out that I was ranting and raving and scored very high a $15 bottle of Chianti. So, once again, please, any episode I do, today we're doing Powerhouse Pinot Noir. Please, if I hate all four of these, does that mean I don't like Pinot? Absolutely not. So, let's not generalize, and let's not take it too far. There are only four wines. You might not even agree with me, but all in all, Chianti's great, everything's great. There's a lot of reasons to love everything. And so let's not nitpick after four wines and generalize that either I or you don't like Chianti at all. Let's taste 9,000 Chiantis and then make a decision. And we may do that for episode 100. Powerhouse Pinot. Numero uno. Melville, Santa Rita Hills, Pinot Noir, 14.9% alcohol. Greg Brewer, one of the most talented winemakers in California, makes this 04 state. This wine's 30 bucks, 30 bones, not cheap, but an unbelievable producer in your past. Great scores from Parker every year. Really nice color for Pinot, real dark, but it's got a little misty, a little romance in the fog. You know, it's kind of interesting back there. So let's give it a whirl, let's see what we think. Nice nose, um, has a little hint of Asian, Asian spice, really ripe raspberry, I really like the nose for the raspberry for sure. What is that? Almost like an autumn leaf kind of, you know, smell. You know how, like, when the seasons change, we're starting to get it now? It's got a little bit of that aspect, and I don't have the window open, so... Very candied, very smooth, really rich, nice flavor. Well, it's really kicking in here on the finish. The mid palate I wasn't so sure about. It's a real young Pinot 04. This is nice candied strawberry. This is good wine. This is delicious. Uh, it's not too new world, so even Bur Burgundy fans, you know, with the old world style Burgundy would enjoy this. Firm grip, nice palate, presence, silky finish, nice bottle of wine. I'm going to score 90 points. Really solid effort, great job, nice work. 
let's move on. Calera, 2002, Reed from the Mount Harlan Pinot Noir. Really, really legendary Pinot. I mean, these single vineyard Calera wines about 10, 15 years ago were the epic, the top of the mountain for Pinot Noir in California. This is the O2 Mount Harlan. This is a $50 bottle of Pinot Noir. 93 points from the wine enthusiast. Not quite the color that the Melville has. Much lighter in color, classic Pinot color. You know, light, I can see my fingers through it. You know, that's what Pinot Noir tends to do. It's a lighter color grape. This has a much more stinky kind of aspect to it. Stinky like the Patriots. You know, really kind of, yeah, very dirt driven, dirty socks, you know, fun pampers smell. It's definitely got a little bit of that aspect, no, no doubt about it. Mm. Much more traditional, 14.0 um, alcohol. Much more traditional stuff, much more green pepper, clove, um, definitely a, a, a dirty kind of Pinot Noir, a, 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 a ground feel like you know, just grab a chunk of soil and just eat it, you know, but it, but it's fascinating, it's interesting. It's got a tremendous mid-palate. The flavor transition to the finish is very nice. It's almost got a little bit of a Tabasco sauce. If you like V8, as I do, you would like this wine. It's very vegetable-driven. No tomato. Substitute the tomato with grape and wine flavors, and that's what I'm getting. It's the best way I can really describe it. Really dry finish, too, which is nice. This would be a tremendous food wine. I'd love to try this with some potatoes, some mushrooms, a little fungi, and this. Oh, baby. You know, this would be great. I mean, this is a nice bottle of wine. Let's go 89 to 92 points, and the reason I'm going that awkward, I know it's a big range, is... There's a little awkwardness to the beginning, which I wonder is if it's going to blow over in a couple of years. And my prediction is yes. And with that going away and it kind of integrating a little bit better, like a perfect puzzle, a little Rubik's Cube action, I think this could be a 92-point wine. I'm high on this wine. I think a lot of people would enjoy this. This is a food wine. Food wine. Let's move on. Fess Parker, 2004, Ashley's Vineyard, Pinot Noir. Fess Parker. Fess Parker. What do we know about Fess Parker? Fess Parker's famous. He's an actor. I think he, uh, if unless I'm wrong here, I think he's Davy Crockett. Look it up. Google it. Tell me if I'm right. But I'm almost positive. This is named after his daughter Ashley, the Ashley's Vineyard. This is also in the Santa Rita Hills, like the Melville, which is the hot area, you know, uh, Pinot Noir country now. I mean, look at this color. It's almost like they're pouring Syrah and cheating. I'm not accusing. Big nose. Very creamy. Big nose. Almost smells like, uh, almost comes off milky. I've used that term 30,000 episodes ago, but, you know, this milky smell I'm getting, that's the oak. Nice. It's nice. It's very new world, though, which is fine. Santa Rita Hills is only 12 miles from the Pacific Ocean. It gets a great breeze. It's just a, a perfect place to grow Pinot Noir. Very new world, vibrant, exciting scene down there. A lot of young guys. Sideways kind of blew up the Santa Barbara, Santa Rita area. Now everybody knows about it. But I went there about three years prior to it. And it was just real culty. You know, it was just like going to, uh, I don't know, like Woodstock or something. They were just a small group and they were just like doing their thing and nobody knew what was going on. It was great. The wines were half the price. You know, Melville used to be 15 bucks. So it was a lot of fun back then. Um, obviously now with the exposure and Madison Avenue and all that, these wines are now $50 for this effort. But it doesn't take away from quality. 90 points, Robert Parker. And let's see what we think. Nice bottle of wine. Uh, nice fruit, solidly made, hard, good effort, but I will tell you, if I want cherry Coke, I can buy it for 90 cents, and this is 50 bucks, and that's what I'm getting, real cherry Coke kind of flavor to it, um, very one-dimensional, that's all it's kind of bringing to the table, finishes short, I'm not on board with you, Mr. Parker, even though I love you, I'm going to go 87, 86.3 points, yeah. Not feeling it. Just a little too made up, a little too new world, and just not my favorite cup of tea. 
Adrian Fogg, Savoy Vineyards from Anderson Valley. This is 90 points Parker as well. And this is at the low, low price of 80 bucks. So big, big, big wine, expensive wine, $80 retail wine. I think we have it a little less, maybe 70, but it's an $80 wine. Color is solid. Whoa. This smells exactly, I mean exactly like soy sauce. I'm serious, you have to spend $80 to smell this wine because it's soy sauce. Holy crap, this is soy sauce and it's ridiculous because it's extremely obvious. Wow, that's pretty cool. I mean, this is what's so great about wine. When you smell something like that and you're like, soy sauce, don't be afraid to say what you smell or you taste or you feel when you get together with your wine friends, even if you're not the most knowledgeable. You know, all these people intimidate you. Don't let them do that. I mean, say what you smell. I mean, seven, eight years ago, I would have not said soy sauce. I would have been embarrassed. I'd be like, how is that there? That's not a characteristic of wine. Some, some wines are. Wow, real obvious, very fishy. I mean, this is an awkward kind of nose. Very ripe fruit. Totally different than the other three. This is wild. I don't know if I love it more than life or hate it more than life. You rarely see me speechless. Um. 91 points. And here's why I'm going to do that. I'm going to give it 89 points on quality of wine and two points for entertainment value. Um, it's an interesting bottle of wine. Very ripe fruit, almost real acidic. I mean, it almost makes you almost like a lemon, almost like biting into a lemon with soy sauce and grape flavors. I mean, I don't know if that's going to convince you to jump on this for 80 bucks, but... A very interesting wine, well made. You can tell it's structured perfectly, good palate. Good mid palate, nice silky finish, awkward flavors, awkward bottle of wine. Um, yeah, and we're gonna end with that. Finally, I'm gonna ask you the question of the day. It's a good one. So take down your pen and paper because this is the best question of the day. Tell me what you think, and this is where all the lurkers need to come out. This is a great opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Tell me what would be the perfect show. You make the four wine lineup. Come up with any theme. Wines that start with tea. Wines that have birds on them. Pinot Noirs from 96. 94 cabs. Whatever. Look at our inventory on winelibrary.com and you tell me the perfect show. And I'm going to do it. Somebody's going to win. Somebody's going to win. And it's going to be the perfect show. Oh, and by the way, first person that tells me who's wearing that number for my beloved Jets right now gets this radical t-shirt. I'm Gary Vaynerchuk, drinking wine. We'll see you next time on WLTV.